Shortly after 9am on April 8th, 1940, the British destroyer HMS Glowworm rammed the 18,000 ton German heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper. It was the climax of a running battle that developed after a single British destroyer inadvertently stumbled into the middle of a full-scale German invasion of Norway. This is the story of a fight to the end against overwhelming odds, and a tale of gallantry that was only recognised in the most extraordinary of circumstances. Three days before fighting a German cruiser single-handed, HMS Glowworm was at anchor. The G-Class destroyer, skippered by Lieutenant Commander Gerard Broadmead Roop, had been assigned to the first destroyer flotilla, part of the Royal Navy's home fleet in February 1940. At the start of April, she was earmarked to be part of an operation to lay mines in the territorial waters of neutral Norway to try and disrupt the flow of Swedish iron ore shipments to Germany. Glowworm became part of the escort for the mine laying force WV, along with the battlecruiser HMS Renown and a host of other destroyers. The British force departed Scapa Flow on April 5th and set out into a North Sea in the grip of an intense early spring storm. After battling against the waves throughout the night, on the morning of April 6th a particularly large swell pitched Glowworm over and threw one of the crew overboard. Lieutenant Commander Roop quickly sought and received permission from Vice Admiral William Whitworth aboard Renown to search for him, and so Glowworm detached from the rest of the British fleet and turned back, sweeping over its previous course in the hope of finding a man-shaped needle in an aquatic haystack. After a period of time, it became obvious that they were not going to find the missing sailor, but by this stage Renown and the others had disappeared. Unable to ask Renown where she was directly due to strict radio silence, Lieutenant Commander Roop had no choice but to take his ship back west again, in a bid to contact Scapa Flow to ask for further orders. Glowworm was now very much alone. This video is brought to you by Wondrium, an online video subscription service that delivers educational and entertainment content across a huge variety of topics, from documentaries on literature, science and history, to tutorials, how-tos, travel logs, and more. One of their educational courses I've been fascinated by has been a comprehensive 24-part series on the Vietnam War, a conflict I've been doing some preliminary reading on with a view to future historiograph videos. It's been particularly eye-opening to hear about the scale of this conflict in Indochina when it was a French colonial war, before the United States even got involved. And there are dozens of courses like this, acting as great jumping off points into topics you might not know much about. Wondrium is also a great place for discovering new passions and diving deeper into your existing ones, whether that's music, art or home maintenance. You can also enjoy Wondrium anywhere, stream and enjoy from your TV, tablet, laptop or phone. You can even download a course or series and listen to it like a podcast. And the best bit is you can try Wondrium out today for no cost. Click on the link in the description below to start your free trial today, and thanks again to Wondrium for sponsoring this video. Eventually, HMS Glowworm was able to make contact with Scapa Flow and get an approximate position report for Renown and Force WV, and was ordered to proceed to their location. But the British Admiralty was about to have a much bigger problem than a single errant destroyer, as at the southern end of the North Sea, the German Kriegsmarine was stirring for an operation rather more ambitious than laying a few mines. On the evening of April 6th, virtually the entire German fleet left port, embarking on an audacious plan to seize the entirety of Denmark and Norway in one swoop. Escorting the largest flotilla of transports heading for Norway were the capital ships Gneisenau and Scharnhorst, as well as the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper. The German ships had similar problems with the sea as the British ones. The destroyers struggled to keep up with the larger ships in the storm, with a number of men lost overboard just as had happened to Glowworm. Unlike the British ship though, the Germans were banned from deviating course to try and pick up the unfortunate sailors. The timing for the invasion of Norway were too tight and the naval forces arrayed against them too strong for that kind of rescue to be attempted. By 4.45am on April 8th, as the sky began to lighten, the German fleet was about 100 miles off Trondheim, or at least the capital ships were. 
The destroyers had become scattered and delayed during a night of storms and were all over the place, somewhere to the south. Visibility was poor, with early morning fog and high seas. HMS Glowworm, meanwhile, was still trying to make her way to a rendezvous with Vice Admiral Whitworth's squadron, but was struggling. The ship's gyro compass had broken during the night, so navigation was difficult, but at 5.30, Lieutenant Commander Roop reported to Whitworth that Glowworm was on her way. A couple of hours of steady progress followed, until the destroyer's lookout spotted the shape of another destroyer looming out of the mist shortly before 9am. When challenged, the vessel identified itself as Swedish. This seemed distinctly unlikely to Lieutenant Commander Roop, so he raised steep, ran Glowworm's battle ensign up, and opened fire. As you might be able to guess, the destroyer was not Swedish, but was in fact the German destroyer Hans Ludemann, trying to rejoin the German fleet. Ludemann had no interest in firing back and turned to the northwest to escape deliberately leading Glowworm away from Vice Admiral Ludian's fleet before vanishing into the mist. Shortly after Ludemann disappeared, the burned von Arnim appeared behind it, and this time there was an exchange of fire, as Arnim tried to follow Ludemann to the northwest. Travelling at 35 knots, the German destroyer was battered by the waves, losing two men overboard and suffering damage to her bridge. Glowworm coped better and began to reel in Lieutenant Commander Kurt Rachel's ship. Arnim tried to use a smokescreen to cover its withdrawal, but still could not shake the persistent destroyer. In desperation, Bern von Arnim altered course to the northeast, hoping that the larger ships of the German fleet could be their salvation. Luckily for Lieutenant Commander Rachel, at about the same time, 9.30am, Vice Admiral Ludians was dispatching the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper to the south to bring the situation under control. Admiral Hipper was a heavy cruiser of more than 18,000 tons, with eight 8-inch guns. To say she outgunned Glowworm would be understating it. Led by Captain Helmuth Hay, Hipper was laden with troops from the 138th Mountain Regiment bound for Trondheim. She steamed south towards the reported action, cutting through the waves with less trouble than the destroyers. At 9.50, two mastheads could be seen, one on each side of the hipper. Initially, it was impossible to make out which was friendly and which was hostile. The destroyer on the starboard side flashed the letter A in Morse code three times, which the cruiser's bridge took to be an attempt at asking who they were. Moments later, hipper's lookouts reported the destroyer was flying a white ensign. It was Glowworm. Captain Hay quickly ordered his ship to open fire, with the hostile target at a range of 8,400 metres. He also swung Hipper's bow around to point at Glowworm, to try and mitigate the risk of a torpedo attack. Hipper soon struck the destroyer, prompting the route to lay smoke to try and gain some respite, of which there was little forthcoming. Hipper continued to straddle its opponent, with the distance between them decreasing all the time. Glowworm's crew were doing their best to return fire, but their small 4-inch shells were having little effect on a German cruiser almost 10 times their displacement. After emerging from the smoke, Hipper's secondary armament opened up and pummeled the little ship. The radio room was hit and destroyed. Shrapnel raked the deck from hits of the bridge, and the Fordmost gun was taken out of action. Leading seaman Fred Smith, who was inside two gun during the battle, described the scene later as hell on earth. Despite the punishment she was receiving though, HMS Glowworm pressed her attack on the Admiral Hipper. At 10.10am and just 800 metres from the enemy, she launched a spread of torpedoes. Captain Hay had prepared for this with the positioning of his ship and was able to manoeuvre to avoid them with one torpedo passing by a few metres away on the port side. Having played his strongest card, Lieutenant Commander Roop now darted his ship back into the smokescreen, but Hipper was having none of it. Not keen to wait for more torpedoes to appear, Captain Hay resolved to end the battle as quickly as possible, and he pushed through the smoke. On Glowworm, the situation was desperate. Both of the Ford guns were now out of action and the upper deck was strewn with injured sailors. A fire burned amidships and a shell had gone through the sick bay, causing huge casualties. Lieutenant Commander Roop may have hoped for respite with the smoke for protection, but he didn't get it. Hipper charged out of the smoke, 
closing the distance relentlessly. With no time to manoeuvre to fire more torpedoes, the British officer decided there was only one thing for it. He ordered as much speed as the ship's boilers could muster and drove Glowworm into the side of the German cruiser. There was a monumental crash as the two ships collided. In Glowworm's aft magazine, where Stoker Albert Harris was stationed, there was a huge noise and all the lights went out. Very swiftly after which the ship began to list badly. As she scraped down the side of the German ship, Glowworm ripped a hundred foot hole in Hipper's hull. Five hundred tons of water rushed in and another sailor, Seaman Second Class Ritter, was thrown over the side. Glowworm's bow was then ripped off in the impact and the ship rapidly began to sink. Roop quickly ordered abandoned ship and the ship's crew scrambled their way over the side into the freezing waters of the North Sea. Initially, Captain Hay thought about moving swiftly away from the scene of the sinking, assuming that other British ships must be in the area to pick up the survivors. But luckily for these stricken sailors, he reconsidered. Admiral Hipper swung round to position herself downwind of the survivors, remaining on station for over an hour to pull as many survivors as they could out of the sea. Thirty were saved from the oil-drenched water, including Fred Smith and Albert Harris, but not Lieutenant Commander Roop, whose strength gave out while trying to hold onto a rope thrown over the side of Hipper. He, along with 115 other members of Glowworm's crew, perished. By all accounts, Gerard Broadmead Roop's leadership of his crew during this action was exemplary, leading his men from the front against impossible odds to the very last. Both Albert Harris and Fred Smith, when interviewed by the Imperial War Museum in the 1990s, described him as an extremely brave man. Harris went on to say that Roop was a true blue naval man and a destroyer captain. They were death or glory boys, destroyer captains. On the fight and the eventual ramming, Harris said, We were all for it. Whatever he did, we were there. Despite this, for a long time there was no acknowledgement of Roop's gallantry, and indeed that of the whole crew. After all, Glowworm had sunk with no British witnesses who weren't in captivity, so there was little information about the exact circumstances of her demise. But then something extraordinary happened. Captain Hay, whilst the war was still going on, wrote to the British Admiralty via the Swiss Red Cross, outlining what he saw as Roop's gallantry and recommending that he be given an award. And so, in July 1945, more than five years after his death, Lieutenant Commander Roop was awarded the Victoria Cross for his supreme coolness and skill under fire. It was the first time Britain's highest award for gallantry had been awarded based on the recommendation of an enemy combatant, and was a fitting end to the tale of a little destroyer that went down fighting. <laughs>